Hey, Tony here. Today we're doing an unboxing from the Criterion Flash Sale, so stay tuned. So today I received my order from the Criterion Flash Sale that was going on last week on their website. They did have 24 hours where all of their in-stock items were 50% off. Um, today I wanted to take time to show you what I picked up. And also I wanted to bring on a special guest to see what he picked up. So today we are going to um, do a little different format and we're going to have David from Cartoon Fortress join us and we're going to see what all we picked up. Okay, so uh, thanks for being here, David. Um, I thought we'd go ahead and talk about what we picked up from the Criterion Flash Sale. Um, I know I got six titles. Um, how many did you pick up? So I counted out. I've got ten titles here that I that I picked up. So what I thought we would do is, since you got ten titles, I'm going to let you go first and just um, randomly just. Show me one of the titles that you picked up and tell me a little bit about why you wanted to get that one added to your collection. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. And maybe if there's if there's duplicates. So if I show one or you show one that the other person got, we can just kind of... We might, we might have some duplicates because I went off to your, some of your recommendations. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and start here. So admittedly, before I show this title, I'm not, a, I'm not really well versed on the films of David Lynch. But uh, I do have a racer head, which I absolutely love. And this is a, especially just the way this looks and the way it's going to look on the shelf is going to be a great companion piece. And I'm very excited to watch this film. So this is from 1980, and this is the new release of Elephant Man. Mm. Um, very famous film, one that I'm, I'm kind of shocked that I haven't seen to this point. And this has got Anthony Hopkins and John Hurt. And like I said, directed by David Lynch from 1980, same year as The Shining, my favorite horror film. Uh, and this one comes in at a runtime of 123 minutes and was actually filmed in black and white, um, even though it's a film from 1980. So a cool cover on here, it, it does match the, yes, yeah, so we got a duplicate here. Yeah. So this does match actually quite a bit. Sorry, trying to keep everything in frame here. It does match quite a bit the style of the eraser head cover where it's that black and white and you've got this really cool artwork on here. So Yeah, I, I really like the artwork on it. The thing about the Elephant Man is I've never actually seen it, but oh, I have yeah. a few things about it. And um I did pick up the Studio Canal release back in the day when this was released. Really nice still book, but Very I cool. never we opened it up to watch it. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to checking this one out. But now, it is, is that, it's interesting that you've never seen this before either. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. Uh, David Lynch is definitely a blind spot in my kind of my film watching life. But but yeah, Eraserhead, I really, really love. Um, I've seen Blue Velvet once, and I think I need to revisit that one. It seems to be a little bit of a, um, well, it's, it's an interesting film. It it seems to be one that merits multiple watches is what I'm trying to get at. So I'd like to revisit that one. And then I know their criterion's got crash coming out soon. And I know a lot of people are excited about that. Right. Uh, anyways, so that I'm really excited about the new 4k digital restoration on this. And I know that now the studio canal version you have, is that, is that the one that came out what last year or is that an older oh. release? Yeah, it's an older release. It's been out a couple of years. It's region A and region B. Um, okay. But yeah, I actually think it's still available on Zabby's website if you know if anybody's interested in it. But um, okay. I, I think I got it just because I knew I hadn't seen it before. It was something that I wanted to check out. Of course, I never did. As you can see, it's still sealed up. But yeah, um, yeah I'm definitely going to be checking out this Criterion release. Yeah, it, it's a really great looking release. And then as you can see on the back there, I mean, we've got Ton, tons of supplements to get into so yeah and then uh you know the the booklet included which i'm not sure if it's a leaflet or a full stapled book in this yeah. one I, i'm I not, I, I'm not imagine, sure. I can't imagine that it's a full book just because of how thin the package is right and this one That's actually then i would thought it was going to be yeah in fact i'm looking over here at my shelf at a racer head this looks to be well actually 
probably about the same size. If not, this is maybe a touch smaller even than the eraser head release. But yeah, we're we're splitting atoms at this point. But yeah, no, it's a, a definitely excited to to watch that one and and dive into the release. So so as far as the pickups that I did, all the pickups that I did were blind buys. I never seen any of these movies. Um, but I did go off of some of your recommendations when I picked these up. So we may run into some other duplicates that I got. So I thought I'd go ahead and take the next one and show you what I picked up next. And I picked up Naked City. Oh, hang on. Hang on. You may have gotten that one also. I did. This is a new release. Yep. So this is a 1948 release, 98 minutes in black and white. And totally off of your recommendation. I've never actually heard of this movie. Never seen it. Had you had you actually seen it before? You know, so well, first, so this is Spine 380. So this is an upgrade from the DVD version. Okay. So, so it's a new release Blu-ray. Just came out. Uh, I can't remember the exact release date, but this is this is a new uh, new release. Um, I've seen part of Naked City on the Criterion Channel. I actually have not seen through the entire film. Um, I'm I'm kind of weird like this sometimes where. There's titles available on the Criterion channel, and I'll start watching. And if I really, really like what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll, I'll stop and then hold off until I get the physical release. I'm, yeah. it's kind of a weird thing, but I. And this is a Jules Dassin, um, which he will have a repeat, uh, or actually, oh, I think maybe I have another Jules Dassin. Anyways, yeah, Jules Dassin. Um, but yeah, good good pick on your part. Yeah, so so what I do usually whenever these sales happen, I'll go straight to the um, Criterion website and I'll check out the trailers, I'll check out the photos, I'll read up on it before I actually make my purchase. And a lot of times I'll go to Blu-ray.com and see what kind of review it gets. But most of these movies from the Criterion get a pretty good review already. So, so I think anything that I ended up picking up was going to be good no matter what. Yeah, just the way they curate their titles, or they're they're uh, usually really good, like you said. Plus, I, I do like the older movies too, just because you know something different that I have never seen. So, what else did you pick up? Yeah, you know what, I I do have another Jules Dassin title, so I'm going to go ahead and go with that one. Okay, what'd you get? So this is from 1947. This is 98 minutes, and mm -hmm. actually, funny enough, this is. So Naked City was spine number 380. This is spine number 383. So we have another uh, DVD upgrade to Blu-ray. Um, and this is Brute Force. Yes. Whoa, log glare there. It, <laughs> nice. Yeah, this one I have, this one I have seen. I, I saw the entire film on the Criterion channel. And mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to be disappointed. It's a really engaging watch. And... Um, this is one that also features a new uh, 4K digital restoration. Let's see. Oh, in fact, Naked City does too. It's a new restoration. So that's going to be a big upgrade over the DVD. Of course, it's Blu-ray, but then we get the, the 4K restoration as well. So this should look quite a bit better than the previous DVD release. Yeah, and I don't really have very many Burt Lancaster movies in my collection. Um, now, do you have, I know we've talked about Sweet Smell of Success. Do you have that one by chance? Oh, I'd have to check and see. Yeah, that is that is a, a firm recommendation if you don't have Sweet Smell of Success. I do not have that one in the collection. I'll have to, I'll have to put that on my list. Yeah, Burt Lancaster and Tony Curtis, and it is just, it is awesome. That's, that's one of my favorite um because I think that was actually a blind buy for me. I bought it during a sale. It's got a really great Digipack presentation and just really cool artwork. And it caught my eye at one of the sales and became one of my favorite blind buys that I've ever made. So That's definitely good. recommend that. Okay, so the next one I picked up is another new release, and it is Claudine. So uh, you get yeah. that one also. Great minds think alike, my friend. Yep. So this is from 1974, and it's it's 92 minutes in color. And I really had never heard of this movie, um, but I did watch the trailer on the Criterion Channel, or maybe on Blu-ray.com, and it seemed very interesting as far as 
the story. Plus, it has Diane Carroll in it and James Earl Jones. Yeah. But it looked really, it looked really good. It looked like something I'd be interested in. And this is, of course, uh, three years prior to Darth Vader. That, of course, right. <laughs> James but Earl. His, his voice is still, his voice is still the same. It's still James Earl Jones. Yeah, and this is another one that we're, we're getting some great 4K digital restorations. This is another one that received that treatment. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then it this is looked, it, okay. So it almost to me, just watching what I saw, looked almost like a drama, but also like a comedy mixed in. Yeah, kind of like a, kind of a slice of life type. Yeah, movie. yeah. So, and I like those type of movies. Yeah, the, I'm I'm in the same boat as you. This is one that was totally new to me when they announced it, and I did my research and and looks right up my alley. Yeah. This is uh, directed by John Barry. I I don't off the top of my head know uh, other work he's done, so this might be a an entryway into his filmography. Yeah. So what else did you pick up? All right. So next up, we have a Western. Uh, yeah. This is directed by Henry King. And uh, this is uh, one of my favorite actors of all time, Gregory Peck in The Gunfighter. Oh, wow. Um, so this is a new release. This is spine number 1053. Yeah. And that artwork is really nice, isn't it? It is. Black, it's black and white with the splash of red in there. It's yeah, it has the red highlight in there. Really, really cool artwork, yeah. and yet another another new 4K digital restoration. And uh, this is from 1950 with a runtime of 84 minutes, and is a black and white presentation as well. Yeah. Uh, all you have to say is Gregory Peck for me to right, be on. Exactly, and plus I always I really do enjoy a good western movie. Um, so yeah, and everything about this one. Looks yeah, uh, no, this, yeah, this looks really good. And then we get uh, not not a whole ton of extras on this one, but um, but a, a really great package overall. It looks like so. Very excited about this. And the uh, the Western Criterion Library is uh, they, they're getting some really great titles in that collection. I know last uh, last sale, what did I pick up? It was a Jimmy Stewart. Yeah. Destry, uh, Destry, something. yeah, Destry rides again. Yes, yeah, so I still haven't seen that one yet. Oh, it's it's an absolute blast. Yeah. So after, has... after the last Criterion sale for Barnes and Noble, um, I was watching two Criterion movies every Sunday for every single week. You know, trying to get through my collection, but um, about a month ago, I quit doing that just because I was in the middle of other stuff. But yeah. I definitely want to start checking out more of these, um, um, more of these videos, more of these movies. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my last pick, and you probably got this one too. I don't know. Have you seen Make Way for Tomorrow? Did you get this one? How 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 funny is that? That's not even a new release, and that's one that I picked up. Yeah. See. So I don't know. I think I think what happened was I think that we had a conversation on that day and you made recommendations. So I just went strictly off of what you recommended. Awesome. And I guess if you recommended it, that meant you were buying it also. But as far as Make Way for Tomorrow, I really like the concept of the movie. There's another old one. I think this is from 1937, black and white, 92 minutes. and. Um, I don't know. It just it appealed to me because of um, just the story about these two people aging. I don't really know much about it. So why did you decide to pick this one up? Well, so this is a film that I have seen. Oh, um, have? It, it, it's it's very emotionally engaging. It's a very human driven kind of piece, and. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's it, it's almost kind of a sad commentary on why it sucks to get old. <laughs> mm. You know, it's th th there's a lot of family elements that come into play. It's it's a very sad story, um, with just really wonderful performances. And I, yeah, I mean, it, it it's one that definitely sticks with you. And and uh, 
you know, not not necessarily one that you're going to want to watch again and again and again, but it does have rewatch value, I would say, um, and is a great addition to kind of your your uh, drama library right. is what I would say. So really, really well done film. The unfortunately, the copy that I got is just uh, very, very dirty. <laughs> like on the, I don't know if you got any of the ones you picked up. I mean, it's like it's like this went through a construction site and then they delivered it to me yeah, maybe that's what happened i know that um most of mine are in pretty good condition sometimes the um the inner artwork kind of gets slipped up a little bit but that's yeah that's, um, so so those are my six titles now you said you got 10 titles yeah so i've got four more to go here so what did you get that i did not pick up and maybe it's something that i might get the next barnes and noble sale yeah, so the next one comes from a filmmaker that I I try and recommend as much as possible, and he's a documentarian. Uh, this is D. A. Pennebaker, and usually he's working, I uh, you know, with somebody else. So this is a uh, Chris uh, Chris Hedges, and I I don't know that I'm pronouncing his name right. And D. A. Pennebaker, and this is a new release at spine number one zero three nine. Uh, from 1979, and this is Town Bloody Hall. Hmm. Um, so this is a documentary. Uh, so it takes place in on April 30th, 1971. Standing room only crowd of New York's intellectual elite packed the city's town hall theater to see Norman Mailer, uh, fresh from the controversy over his essay, The Prisoner of Sex, and the backlash it received from the leader of the women's movement. So hmm. this kind of that community all uh, against Norman Mailer. And it, it seemed like uh, it seemed like one of those moments in history that I, that I wanted to watch. <laughs> I do remember, I do remember looking that one up on the Criterion um, website and I wasn't a big fan of, I'm not a big fan of documentaries. Um, okay. I do like some more like true crimes and that kind of stuff, but this one just did not appeal to me. I don't know why. Yeah, I guess I want to see how you what you think about it. Yeah, it. You know, and the thing that I like about D. A. Pennebaker, and you know the the films that he's produced, and we're talking. If you want to reference the Criterion Collection, so we've got the Monterey Pop Festival, and uh, he did uh, Bob Dylan, Don't Look Back. Um, what I what I really appreciate about his work is that he he's the type of documentary filmmaker that just has a camera present and then just lets everything unravel, you know, just everything happen naturally. And that's, that's what I like is it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel, um, well, I mean, it's a documentary, but it doesn't feel staged and you know, scripted and all this. It's like, See, yeah, I, I'm kind of the opposite. I like I like the narration. I like the um, I don't know. I like a like I said. I like the true crime stuff where they talk about what happened and show clips and stuff. Yeah, but, you know. So that one really didn't appeal to me. So so what else did you what else did you get? Yeah. So next up, this is one that I have seen and a filmmaker that I'm I'm loving more and more with each of his films that I watch and I have seen this. And this is by Abbas Karastami, and this is Close Up. Close Up. And this is from 1990 in color and has a runtime time of 98 minutes. Um, and this is basically a, a tale of, and, and I don't want to give anything away because it's, it's a very interesting story, but it, it involves kind of a identity theft. Mm. And... Um, it involves actually a, a filmmaker and then somebody impersonating that filmmaker and it kind of all goes from there. But I mean, it's a, uh, it's, it, it's very uncomfortable at times. <laughs> Are you saying uh, you actually saw this before? Yes. Yeah. I've seen this before. And Kiristami, like I said, he's one of those directors that I, it, it's everything that I'm seeing from him is just wonderful. Now I did get in the the July sale. I got a taste of cherry, 
um, which I haven't seen yet. And then I'm making my way through the Coker trilogy. I've seen Where is the Friend's House? And I still need to watch the last two films. Where is the Friend's House is incredible. Um, every, everybody that I can get to watch that film, I want to watch that film. It's really, really incredible. Just, uh, again, and you can kind of see a theme here. I love these very human pieces. Mm -hmm. And that one, the story with uh, Friend's House is very, very simple. It's deceivingly simple. Um, but it's just, it's deeply, deeply human and very moving. Um, so highly recommended anything by Kiarostami is, is a recommendation. Yeah. Um, and that one is, uh, I don't know if I said the spy number 519. So that came out quite so a while. There's a lot of the Criterion movies that I've been watching, um, but you, of course you can always check to see what I'm watching out on Letterboxd. I don't know. I don't know if you ever see what I'm watching on Letterboxd or not, but um, most of the time, whenever I watch things, a lot of them are real heavy as far as the mood. So sometimes I do like to lighten it up a little bit with a good comedy. If it's short. Um, but I don't know. Did you pick up anything that was more up, um, lighter? Lighter? Nope. <laughs> nope. Another dark not, one. Not 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 this time the in fact you'll hear i mean well, the last two titles that i have i and, th and this is another filmmaker that i'm uh that i'm really getting into his work and now i saw this film a while ago and i'm going to need to watch it again because i don't remember it very well in fact i think this is one that i watched on the criterion channel really really late at night and just kind of fell asleep but um this is by samuel ford and this is The Naked Kiss by yeah, Samuel Fuller. Um, this is from 1964, 90 minutes, and is in black and white. Um, and it his, what's it that? Well, no. That, so, I, so I was watching this really late at night, so I really didn't have a chance to, mm -hmm. to stay up. So I probably shouldn't have even started it. But, um, but again, really liked what I saw, and so I wanted to just pick up the disc and, and kind of dive in. Um, but yeah, Samuel Fuller, for anyone not familiar with his filmography, he's the other, uh, the other film criterion film that I have of his is shock corridor. Mm -hmm. And that comes highly recommended. Um, really, really loved that one. And uh, it seems like this one, th there are some themes with uh, some parallels with the themes that are explored. Um, but he's, he's got a really wide kind of range in his filmography. He's done, he's done Westerns as well. In fact, uh, 40 guns is another criterion release that, and that's actually a Samuel Fuller film. And yeah, I when I saw that one a couple of months ago. Yeah. How, how did you like that one? Oh, I liked it. It was good. Yeah, and I know both of us have the Eureka box set. And then I don't know if you have the, oh, my indicator sets are back here. Um, mm -hmm. There's a Samuel Fuller uh, indicator set as well. And so I, I've got a lot of Samuel Fuller to watch and then including, you know, revisiting this one. Yeah. Uh, now, is that, is that, are those new shelves back there behind you? Yeah, so these are new new shelves. I um, So my, my whole collection, I know nobody can see, but I've had kind of up in the front of my room. These are uh, Ikea Billy bookshelves that I got. And I, I did, I tore out my entire closet in here and then put in new shelving. So I've, uh, I've essentially doubled my, my uh, capacity here. So that's nice. Yeah, that space, it looks like you got a lot of space back there on the top. Yeah, the top um, I'll be able to work with. I know actually right kind of above my head back there, I'm actually going to get my Friday the 13th lithograph framed oh, and nice. uh, put that up there, the the uh, wide format lithograph. So yeah. and then I have some more collector sets up there. But yeah, this is uh, this is all behind me. And I've I've kind of spread out the collection so that I have kind of collection everywhere. And then there's you can see the shelves here. There's lots of room to expand. And so so were there any other titles that you picked up or was that everything? So I got one more, and this is directed by Don Siegel, another uh, great director. 
Um, and this is one of the dual edition, uh, dual format editions from Criterion, which they've stepped away from doing now. Um, mm -hmm. but got the Blu-ray and DVD from 1954. This is spine number 704, and this is Riot in cell block 11. Yeah, see, I think I would like that. Yeah, see, so I, I got a, a Brute Force, you know, the two Jules Dassin films, and I've had this on my radar for a really long time, and it seems like every time the sale comes up and I go in store, there's one copy, and it's just beat to crap. So <laughs> I just decided I'd take my chance with having Criterion send, me, send one out. So I'm um, really excited to watch this. Kind of a, it looks like it might kind of run close to something like brute force, but kind of a, a prison, you know, high, you know, kind of an intense prison movie. So, uh, yeah, so that, that was my last pickup. And then, yeah, this has got a decent amount of extra features. This one has a new 2k digital restoration and yeah, really, really excited to, to watch this one. It's been a long what time. Year, what year did that one come out? 54. Okay. That's pretty good. So, so that was a that was a good uh, to me. I, I I'm glad that they had the flash sale just because I do like to purchase directly from the Criterion website so that I can earn points toward another purchase. Um, but what what are your thoughts about the November Barnes and Noble sale? Do you do you think they're going to have it? Have you heard anything? I so yeah, in the community that you and I are both on on Facebook, we're we're in kind of the the regular movie community as well as some criterion groups. And there were reports in there that, uh, that a, w one of our members who is, uh, also Barnes and Noble employee. And of course, all of this is just speculation, mm -hmm. um, was that it was going to be from November 8th or something like that through the end of the month. And, and that does kind of match what we had with July, because if you remember, the sale in July didn't start until I think the twelfth. Mm -hmm. um, so it's 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 not you know right at the beginning of the month. And in fact, even in times past, we've had the sale that it it starts, you know, October twenty eighth or 29th, and then it goes through the first couple days of December. But yeah. um, I don't know. I don't have any definitive thoughts. Obviously, I hope it happens. And I know for me it's going to be a short list on what I'm going to be after. Cause I did go in kind of heavy on the criterion cell. And then right. I actually, I actually put in some Shocktober orders with uh, scream factory and uh, Kino Lorber. So right. I've got I, coming in I, mean, and I ordered, um, I ordered from screen factory and I ordered from Kino and I haven't received any shipping notification yet for either one of those sites. Have you? No. And you know, it's, it's actually been, uh, I, I made an order with Scream Factory. In fact, I was talking to you about this where, I mean, it, it was uh, just over a month for me to receive my order that I put in this summer from them. So I'm, I'm really not expecting to hear anything for a little while. I hadn't had that experience with Kino Lorber and right. even with them, I haven't heard any anything on that, that order. So I guess when it comes in, it comes in. But uh, I, I I will say this though for the November Criterion sale I'm targeting uh, the Irishman. The Irishman I want to get Parasite. And oh and Parasite yeah Parasite I'm gonna get. Yeah. No, you did you already got Parasite right? No I haven't gotten Parasite in fact I was playing around with the idea of possibly just ordering that one on on Amazon I know it's gonna cost me a bit more but um, I, I could see that one maybe being popular enough that it's going to be kind of hard to find in stores and the, you know, the supply chain issues apparently are kind of a still, still a big factor right now. Yeah. So you can't really plan on your stores getting in, you know, 10, 15 copies of these, of these yeah. movies, you know, well, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that it'll be in store because I like to look at the packaging before I purchase. Yeah. You know, well, I want to be perfect. Well, luckily, you know, I know we both got this, the, the Elephant Man, the, the the copy that I got is pristine. Yeah, mine's pretty good. Um, it looks like they got a little tight with the shrink wrap, but but at least it's going to be nice enough to where it'll fit into one of those bags that I like to use to protect. Yeah. So, yeah, oh, yeah. 
we're fine. Yeah, definitely. And and I know, um, in fact, I I received or didn't receive. I, I I was doing a little bit of research on it, and it looks like the Irishman is also going to be this style. Oh, is uh, it? Okay. And then uh, Parasite. Did you, did you did you ever watch the Irishman? I, I did. Yeah, I, I, enjoyed I enjoyed it. I mean, to me, uh, the Irishman. You know, and I know. Scorsese is is kind of a um it's like people either really like his work or they really don't. It's very polarizing. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm one that I you know I love Goodfellas and you know and that I, I like what he brings. Taxi Driver is really great. Um you know and, and so and in fact I picked up the Scorsese shorts that I still have to watch. Right. Um but I liked the Irishman, um, it, it, it did kind of play off as a kind of a greatest hits album of Scorsese's work, if you will, just kind of, it's it, no, no, no real surprise kind of where the story goes. I, I think it's a bit drawn out if I'm being totally honest, but I got through the first half of it and then I heard it's going to get a criterion release. So I just kind of quit watching it. Oh, it just took too long, you know, yeah, no, it's it's definitely got a long runtime. I mean, yeah. I, I was I, I would say that I was personally I was engaged the whole time, and I I didn't regret you know watching it at all. I mean, obviously, because I'm going to be buying it, but right. um, but for Scorsese fans, I think you know if, if you haven't seen it, I think it's worth a, a blind buy. Yeah, uh, you know, for those that are on the fence or maybe aren't big Scorsese fans, I'd say skip it because it's it's definitely a Scorsese film i mean it's got that that vibe to it that feel to it you know so okay well um anything else you want to share before we disconnect no i appreciate you having me on the channel it's always fun we'll have to definitely do this again for the barnes and noble sale um hopefully i'll be able to do a couple of out and abouts you know, I have to drive about an hour, an hour and a half to go to Barnes and Noble. That actually has the physical media section. So, um, but yeah, I definitely enjoy doing this, and I'm sure we could do this again. Absolutely. Next time, we will do it on your channel. That sounds great. I'd love that. Okay. Well, thanks for stopping by. Thanks, Tony. See you later. So, I hope you enjoyed the video that me and David did. Um, Hopefully you got some ideas of some of the items that we got that might help you with your next purchase. Um, I really do enjoy... So hopefully you enjoy the video with me and David showing what we got from the Criterion Flash Sale. Maybe this gave you some ideas of some things that you might want to pick up during the Barnes & Noble Sale in November. Um, but leave me a comment below. Let me know which of the titles that we showed that um, you've got in your collection and maybe also give us some suggestions of some titles that you think maybe we should purchase during the next um, sale, possibly the Barnes & Noble sale in November. I really do enjoy reading your comments. If you like what you saw here today, please give it a thumbs up and share the video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel or to David's channel, please do so. And if you do subscribe, please remember to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time we, up we upload a new video. If you haven't found me on my social media accounts, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. And if you would like to see the titles that I've been watching, please um, check me out over on Letterboxd. I do have links below if you'd like to figure out where these sites are at. But thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time.